uh, person when he obtained his PhD in industrial engineering. He worked both in academia at different universities, universities, uh, you know, different universities, University of Twente, University of uh, Utrecht, and King, of, King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, and different industries as well. He is um, he has led many collaborative projects uh, in the past, and he is working as a strategic partnership and operation manager at Kaust uh, Solar Cell Center. So let's welcome Dr. Faisal Wali and. Uh, Let's see what he has uh, for us. Dr. Faisal, are you here? Yes. Yes, I'm here and he's... Are you ready? <laughs> I'm here and all well ready. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Topic is a little bit different than what you were listening for morning. It's uh, about ranking and not about really science. But definitely, I will try to make it sure that I will present in more scientific way. So King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, where I'm working right now, it's a very, very new university established in 2009. And uh, it's a research-based university. We have only master and PhD students. Right now, 1,054 students, 145 faculty, and over 400 plus postdoctoral fellows as well. In the last 11 years, Gauss managed to gain some um, rank, uh, ranking as well. Right now, if you look into Nature Index, which is more on research-based ranking system, Gauss stands 119th in the world at the moment. When it comes to our physical sciences, we are 67th. And if you look into QS ranking, citations per faculty, we are number one. So topic is not about cows, topic is more about what Pakistani universities are doing right now in world ranking. And I will give a little bit more detail about how the QS ranking works and what are the key factors which are impacting on QS ranking. And then maybe we can also look into what are the ways Pakistan can, uh, Pakistani universities can look in to improve on those things. The first slide probably is not a big surprise for anybody. National University of Science and Technology is doing pretty well, 355 in world ranking. In Pakistan, they are number one at the moment. Um, second is PIAS, which is Pakistan Institute of um, Engineering and Applied Sciences. And then the public university, Kajazan University comes in, 454, LUMS following them, and then some of the public universities range, ranging between 800 to 1,000. Um, so I think if you look into it, to me, this looks pretty good. You know mm -hmm. why? Because if you look into five years back, um, you will see the NUST was around 500 plus, and it, um, you can see that from last five years, they are continuously improving in their ranking. Similarly, Piaf, Kajal University, LUMS is also trying its best. And some of the public university, unfortunately, is staying in a similar ranking system where they were five years back. And maybe this is something for them to look into. But I have to say that I know personally that NAST, Kajadam University, and LAMS have tried quite a lot of things to improve in these ranking system. And I will mention those things as well, but first I want to talk about what is QS ranking um, and how it is being established. They mainly look into five major things. Academic reputation, which is a big chunk and it's 40% uh, uh, of academic reputation, uh, which is contributing to the scores. Then employer reputation, which is around 10%, and then comes faculty to student ratio. It's also quite important um, for this ranking because it's 20%. Faculty to student ratio is also very much linked with citations per faculty, which is roughly 20% contribution, and then comes to international faculty and international student, which is roughly 10%. So, what is the academic reputation? The academic reputation is um, what QS does, they, they go to 100,000 responding uh, people who are in the academic world right now and ask them three major questions. What are their specific fields? What they think that what is the topic, uh, top domestic university in, in their country? And then the second thing is, uh, the third most important question is what is their top international institution? And when they receive all these answers, they, they look into the data in, in a way that they consider 85% for international universities um, and 15% for domestic universities. 
because domestic universities, if you uh, there is a lot of biasness uh, present from from the academic world as well. So they have to to somehow uh, balance this thing as well. Independent academic reviews thinks that these uh, ranking they are ninety nine percent correct. Yeah. So it's a um, and many people in the academic world are following these rankings. Where Pakistan stands when it comes to academic reputation, Pakistan of NAST is in top 17% and Kajadam University is second with 13.7%. But look, if you consider MIT, which has an academic reputation of 100%, then you will immediately find out that this is one of the area where Pakistan universities need to pay more attention to improve in these categories. And I will discuss a little bit more in details the what steps can we do to improve in academic reputation. But this is definitely a big area where, where we all have to work. And looking to public university like Punjab University or UEG, they are not even, um, unfortunately, not considered having any number in these categories at the moment. Employee reputation works more or less a similar way, but in this case, uh, they, they reach the 50,000 people in industry and then they want to know about company profile, top domestic institution, and top international institution. Depending on the answers from these people, they look into the data. And I think we all know that in, in Pakistan, if, if I before I show you the next slide, I can I think most of you were thinking two universities should be there. One is NAS and second one is LAMS. And results are almost the same. Um, LAMS comes with a 50 uh, plus, and similarly NAS comes with a 50 plus number. In this case, it's quite good, and LAMS and NAST has a lot of industrial projects, which explains um, their ranking here as well. But still, there can be enough things can be done in these cases, um, and unfortunately, again, some of the public universities, uh, Punjab universities or UG, you don't see the numbers anymore there. On this, uh, I will also go in more details in a minute about employer reputation. What can be done actually to improve this? This is um, one of the things where um, I would say a lot of focus done in Pakistan before. And um, if you look into NAST, 1,500 plus faculty and 11,000 for 11,000 students. NAST have done an excellent job here um, and got the ranking above 50, 77%. PIAS is a smaller, uni a smaller institute. It's have 950 students, 164 faculty. Very good. Um, but Khadiyat University as a public university have very, very few faculty members uh, compared to 15,000 students. And LAMS can be improved, can further improve in this category as well because they have 4,000 plus students with 390 faculty. But if you look into citation per faculty, you will see that all of a sudden the trends will be, be reversed because you have a lot of, in case of NAS, they have a lot of faculty. But when they look into citation per faculty, it's, this is a very, very low number. It does not mean that it, uh, they are not doing a lot of research. I think it means that they have a lot of undergraduate students and most of the faculty spending a lot of time um, on teaching responsibility rather than uh, spending time on research. Second is PIAS. And PIAS, if you look into it, um, they did not drop too much here. And one of the reasons they did not drop because they have a lot of PhD students and MPhil students which are contributing in research. And that's why their citations per faculty is quite reasonable. Similarly, Kajadam University is flipped. Yeah. So in case of Kajadam University, they have very high citations. And this can be explained because they have a lot of PhD programs, MPhil programs, and master's program going on at the moment. Also, a quick search on Google Scholar also tells you that they have more senior people uh, in, the, in the university who has a high citation in general. So that's uh, that. These factors are helping uh, Kajadam University to stay very high in this this ranking. Let me remind you again that these two categories, faculty per student ratio and citation per faculty, they both are equal weightage, 20% and 20% in, in this previous ranking. I keep this slide. It doesn't show anything international student or international faculty. But I think this uh, this slide is more to accept the fact that they, we are not doing very well in these, these two categories. Um, in terms of international student, 
we, we are nowhere and in inter international faculty as well. Um, some of the universities, if you look into MIT or uh, Oxford or Imperial College, then they, they are between 90 to 100. So, they, so these are the two things, that, and, and they can, these two factors can really impact on us. And I can give you an example from UAE. If you look into UAE universities at the moment, they have, I just selected three universities, they are all three above uh, any of the university from Pakistan. Um, Khalifa University 211, uh, we have UAE University 284, and American University of Sharjah has a ranking of 348. And if you look on this side, you will find out that academic reputation, employer reputation, faculty to student ratio, or citation per faculty, they are almost in the same range where our universities are. But if you look into international student and international faculty, they are leading, they are reaching 200. And we, we cannot, that's one of the reasons we cannot compete with them. And they are probably right now in top 200 list. So, and then, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. can you please turn off your mic? Okay. Um, sorry, I thought maybe somebody had a question for me. Um, so I, I think one of the, uh, I wouldn't say that this is the right way to go for Pakistan because UA probably attracts a lot of international faculty. I think for us, um, we may go to Malaysia way, and uh, I call it Malaysian model where, where a public university, which was in 2016 in 300, where we have NAS today or PIAS today, and then move from 300 to 221. Uh, so, sorry, uh, 141 in five years' time. And what they have done, actually, how they achieve it, they managed to attract international students only. And this international student, increase of international students in their universities, um, positively give an uh, impact on their academic reputation and employer reputation. And that's how they achieve it. higher number in academic and employer reputation. And that's also eventually attract some international faculty as well. And if you look into the faculty per citation or faculty per student ratio, they are more or less similar places we are now today, or um, other universities in Pakistan are today. So I think this, this, this is something we can do. But other than this, if we go in more detail about academic reputation, we can, we can always use one word. We need to invest in research. Yes, we do need to invest in research, but maybe we need to invest in research in a more smarter way. We can look into focusing on research collaborations with international universities. And when I say international universities, I don't mean only the universities really, uh, are located in Europe or universities located in US. Maybe we need to look into our neighboring countries as well and establish a relationship there. One of the key thing which is missing at the moment, um, or at least I didn't see this happening, alumni network of these universities. These, these they have created, uh, they have a um, lot of, um, very bright scholars which are working in different universities in the world at the moment. Maybe it's time to connect with these alumni and they will probably help them to establish these research collaborations. To me, university has a product which is called student. So students need to be listened when they are on campus and they can give you a lot of good feedback. Unfortunately, some of the universities do not have this um, mechanism in place. A lot of surveys need to be done when the students are there. And when they are leaving the campuses, they will be your brand ambassador everywhere in the world. And then the brand strategy can be adopted very clearly that either university is an undergraduate university, are they focusing on research, are they focusing on technology development? And it has to be clear. And all the, the website design and all these things have to follow these brand strategies. Then comes to international conferences, yes? Well, uh, we have one minute left, please. Yes. And then we have uh, international conferences as well. Um, and international conferences, in Pakistan, there are a lot of international conferences happening at the moment. Unfortunately, um, we do not have a tangible goals there. So that, that has to be linked with tangible goals. Employer reputation, I think I will just focus on one thing. Last in Lump's case, you can see they have offered a specialized case, uh, specialized courses to industry. And that's why they attracted a lot of um, people from industry or the senior management of industry for these courses, and they have successfully managed a relationship with them. So I think this is one thing which local universities or public universities can look into. 
international student and international faculty, I just want to mention two points here, which are very important. I do not understand that why we need high tuition fees from international students. Most of the uh, top university at the moment asking five to seven times higher international student uh, asking more fees from uh, from international students. We have to flip this. We have to make it sure that we offer international students some scholarship and um, attract them so they can come and then when they're leaving, they will be um, they will be helping you for academic reputation as well. And then target the countries. It's, we should not be targeting Europe to, to bring the students. Maybe we need to target. Maldives, Sri Lanka, these countries are Afghanistan. Recently, government has given 3,000 scholarships to Afghan students. And my fear is that was not given through proper, I mean, university, local universities were not involved in this. These 3,000 international students will come and they'll probably be spread into some of the public university, which we will never see in the ranking anyways. Similarly, international student, international faculty can be, um, can be offered some attractive uh, offers. Um, but I think one key thing here we are missing that they are dual national Pakistanis and they probably want to come in Pakistan and work in these universities. And and universities can link or can approach those people through their alumni as well. And last, this is the last slide, um, Iqbal, I, I will no do it immediately. Um, but this is very important because we have the existing scholarship program for postdoctoral fellow. It's an international program where we give the scholarship to the students and they have, they leave the country without having any affiliation with any university. And I don't understand why we cannot connect them with the local universities and they can be uh, our, our uh, they can the local universities can get advantage from this scholarship scheme as well. In general, we all in all university we don't have highest postdoctoral scholarship anyways. Similarly, international PhD program is, is still there, but they are not linked with any local university or professors. That's why citation per faculty, you will never see high citation per faculty. And last thing on this slide, I want to focus a little bit. I think um, it's a buzzword, you call it, but I think Pakistan has a lot of women in science right now, and we need to promote it more. And this, uh, and every time I see some of the universities like NAS, NAMS, Kaiser University, there's so many women in science, and unfortunately, we are not um, focusing on this part. And this will increase the academic reputation as well, because the whole Europe right now working on increasing the women in science. With this, I'm open for the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You uh, you have touched a very critical topic, and to be very honest, uh, I believe the same thing. And thank you for this uh, for a very very nice presentation. Actually, if we don't critique the system. We cannot find the faults, and uh, uh, we need people like you to, you know, to keep criti uh, uh, your critiques so that we can find the faults and we can try to correct them. You are absolutely right. Well, uh, unfortunately, we are actually running out of time, and uh, I would have to request you to please unshare your system. And please, uh, there are some questions in question and answer tab. You can raise one point uh, sir uh, the point is uh, we of, of course you know all the things being discussed in the presentation is very important but i want to bring this point to the attention of the attendees especially students you know i've i've tested both east and west and i've worked in both places i think the uh, you know the pressure of publication is something that uh, academics should not take because when you compare for, for example when you look at um, Elon Musk or his companies, they don't have research papers, but they're doing all the best things in the world. Or if you look at like MIT or Cambridge or Oxford, here the publication pressure is the least. You know, people work for three years, they give their lives to the research and maybe they end up publishing only one paper, but that paper would be something which is worth it and there will be companies coming out of it. Now, one thing was talked about that cows is, you know, like a, having like the best per publication per faculty. Uh, sir, this is very right, but how many of those publications are turning out to be commercial, you know, products or turning out to be economy boosters for the country? And how is cows doing when it comes to the impact, create impact in the society and in the industry? And how is Khalifa University doing in, in that regards? And how is Cambridge doing, for example? What I see 
I've, I've been in Khalifa University, I've been in all these like, you know, uh, universities that we talk about. The only thing that I've seen is that there the research is done only for publication and there is no other research done. And uh, because of that, you know, publication pressure, uh, only thing that people do is just churning, like, you know, become paper machines. And that's something which is very unhealthy. And I think the smaller universities make a very good choice for themselves to, to, to hit a balance between doing the right research and as well as like, you know, publishing to survive. For countries like Pakistan, I think we need to look at our problems rather than the ranking. You know, for me, I wouldn't care if NAST is ranked worst, but it sorts our problems, you know, or, or, yeah, or can I comment on your, like, I think, with a mediocre rank, but it, 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 you know, hits the right course with the industry and it does things which are really needed. It creates companies like Martin Lockheed, you know, or uh, Google, Microsoft. So if we look at like things locally and if we look at the programs locally, I believe this is a very important topic. There can be a lot of, you know, discussion on this. And but yeah, Jarjan, let me let me answer um, two things here. First of all, it's not number of papers; it's number of citations. So that means you can you are calculating the impact of uh, impact of the research. Number of citations means that how many times your paper is uh, uh, actually cited afterwards. That means your paper will be cited only if you have are doing research which is impact related research. Yeah. So second thing is, I think it's not fair to compare a university which has 500 years of history with a new university in Pakistan. And that's why I did not bring the comparison between Cambridge or uh, or NAST. I think, uh, or any of the universities, mm -hmm. also from in local universities, um, from Saudi Arabia or from UAE, I personally think that they are doing impact, they are creating impact for their own people. And the last thing is why ranking is important and they could not touch more on this because right now, how many people coming to Cambridge or MIT from abroad to work with them? You know why? Because their academic reputation is there. And there is a pulling factor to attract investor projects as well. So I think these numbers are important um, and they, they, they are making differences. And right now, if you ask me today, probably NAS does not need to do uh, too much marketing for themselves. Industry would like to come to them by, by themselves. Um, so, th so, and why? Because they are improving academic reputation. Yeah. So, I think uh, these numbers are, are what I want to say. Uh, I, I guess I give you these numbers are somewhere important. Yeah. And I think we need to understand it's not about number of publications. And this is unfortunate right now. One factor when you go in hiring mechanism of faculty, you always, unfortunately, in Pakistan, I'm talking about, you always look into number of publications. I personally think you, if you have one publication which makes an impact, what you are saying, I agree with you this part. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Faisal. It was a very nice talk. And we I think, uh, uh, yes, I think we should need, uh, sir, we need uh, to take a question from uh, Professor Janus. Jason. It would be actually a very uh, nice discussion. Please uh, take this question. Absolutely. I think, I think it will be very valuable. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we yes, well. yes. Now, we I can. just wanted to um, add a minor remark on this discussion about impact and looking at impact in terms of number of citations. I don't think actually this is the correct way of measuring the publication's impact. I think you need to look much more broadly at a paper and its impact. For example, if I publish a paper tomorrow, Who's to say when that paper and its results will have an impact? You know, I could do blue skies research that might have an impact in 50 years, meaning the paper won't be published very, um, cited very much. Or I might publish a paper that is picked up by industry and creates a company. So I think it's important not to have one definition of impact, but you need to have a very broad understanding of what it means to have impact and of course you need a very broad definition of how you measure impact and I think you cannot measure this in very simple terms by extracting H values of papers or individuals. Um, to take an example, most prestigious um, fellowship applications now in the UK prohibit you from including H impact data on your CV. 
because it's no longer seen as a very helpful way of measuring either the impact of a paper or the impact of a scientist. As a, you know, just to reiterate, you need to look at context. It's extremely important. You know, if you start to have age impact factors as hiring parameters, you risk hiring the wrong people. And personally, I think we need to embrace um, research which has direct industrial impact, but equally we need to embrace blue skies research. And I think any successful research institution, whether it's a university or um, an industrial institution needs to have a spectrum of different types of scientists working at their institution. By that I mean those that are doing blue skies research, those that are doing industry-led research, and a whole diverse range of different types of research and different backgrounds. If I take my own group as an example, we have chemists, we have physicists, we have material scientists, etc. Et and I think it's when you put all those things together, that's when you do important science. And not have preconceived ideas of what makes a scientist good or bad. I think this asks for a very big panel discussion. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but Jess, Jason, I, I would just want to say one more comment on this. You are absolutely right. And that's why if you look into nature index, nature came forward because they want to calculate the right impact. And what they are doing is they have complete different mechanism to calculate this. What is the actual impact of one publication? It's, a, it's another talk maybe, but but I think if we are looking for one particular um, impact from any university, then probably natural index is the way to go. All right, we would like to thank you all panelists also for. Uh, coming and discussing this very important topic. This is always a hot topic. Um, 